Doubles Pickleball Strategy 101, How to Play Smart Pickleball, 10 Basic Tips. In this video, we will show you how to play smart or high percentage pickleball. The biggest thing holding back most intermediate players is not their ball striking skill. Instead, it's failing to understand smart play. Before we get started with the specifics, let's talk about a main strategy objective of pickleball, which is getting your team to the net as quickly as possible. In this way, doubles pickleball is like doubles tennis. The team at the net has a huge advantage over players who are back in the court. So, most of the key strategy tips we will list are aimed at securing the overall strategy of getting your team to the net while keeping the other team away from it. Starting out, I'll go over the smart strategy shot by shot, starting with the serve. For this lesson, we will assume that all four players have equal skill. Tip number one, shot number one, the serve. Avoid service faults. Aim for the middle of the box and make sure your serve gets into the box. Let's start with the serve. The best strategy is to aim for the center of the box and minimize serving faults. Serves need not be fast or very low to the net. If you aim for the center, your outcome or capability pattern will likely look something like this. Now let's talk about player positions. Both members of the serving team need to be behind the baseline until the return of serve shot is hit by their opponent. The service receiver should be behind the baseline at least until the server hits the ball. The partner of the service receiver should be fully up to the no volley zone line with his toes only an inch or two behind the line. So, to sum up, at the moment of the serve, three players are behind the baseline and one player is fully up to the non-volley zone line. Tip number two, shot number two, the return of serve. Avoid service return faults when returning the serve. Aim for the spot shown here. Again, the service receiver should stand behind the baseline when the serve is hit. His partner should be up at the non-volley zone line. When returning the serve, a good strategy is to aim at the point shown here, irrespective of which side of the court you are hitting from. This spot is good for several reasons. First, this forces a right-handed opponent to hit a backhand shot. Second, shots down the middle go over a lower part of the net. And third, shots down the middle can cause confusion among your opponents. As with the serve, the return does not need to be fast or low to the net. However, you should avoid short returns, which give your opponent a quick and easy route to the net. If you aim for the point shown, your outcome or capability pattern will likely look something like this. The following video clips show top players making the service returns as just described. Tip number three. Immediately after returning the serve, charge to the no volley zone line and be fully ready and in place to receive your opponent's shot, which is the third shot. After hitting the return of serve, the service receiver must get fully to the no volley zone line, on time, every time, ready to receive the third shot. There are really no exceptions to this rule. When at the no volley zone line, you need to have your toes only an inch or two behind the line. If you have poor mobility, return the serve with a lob shot if necessary to ensure that you get fully to the line on time. The team at the net has a huge advantage over opponents who are deep in the court. The team receiving the serve should always establish control of the net upon hitting the return of serve shot. 
The following video clips show how top players always get to the net quickly and before their opponents hit the ball. A common and serious mistake is for service receivers to hang back or otherwise be out of position to receive the third shot. This failure to get dominance of the net will likely lead to the other team getting dominance of the net. There are other reasons you need to get to the net. It allows your partner to see you and what you are doing. The net shields your feet getting to the net makes your opponent's next shot, that is the third shot, harder to execute, and getting to the net gives you a chance to smash any ball that comes over high. Tip number four, partners should position themselves intelligently, staying linked together and repositioning after each hit. A common fault among beginning players is that they play a this is my side and that is your side type of coverage strategy. In this way, player A mainly stays here and attempts to defend this half of the court and player B mainly stays here and attempts to defend this half of the court. The problem with this is that there is a hole in the center and the hole gets bigger whenever player A or B moves toward a sideline. With this type of coverage strategy, it's easy for your opponent to score. As soon as somebody moves toward a sideline, the ball will be placed right down the middle. Now let's talk about how good players cover the court. Instead of working independently, the teammates link together to form a wall, and the wall slides in relation to the position of the ball. If this is the position of the ball coming to the receivers, the receiver should position themselves as shown. If this is the position of the ball coming to the receivers, the receiver should position themselves as shown. If this is the position of the ball coming to the receivers, the receiver should position themselves as shown. Notice how the teammates stay linked together, not more than eight feet apart and often closer. This is how the wall should move versus where the ball is located. After every hit of the ball, players need to reposition as necessary. Notice that the teammates only attempt to protect the most important two-thirds of the width of the court. It is vital to ensure that the ball cannot get between the two teammates. The following video clips illustrate the coordinated movement and constant repositioning in response to the ball position. Your opponents will always be looking for the opportunity to hit the ball between you and your partner. That's why you must stay linked together and move in a coordinated fashion. Good teammates also communicate really well. Yell mine or yours unless the shot is obvious. Yell no to your partner if you see a shot is going to be out of bounds. Tip number five, shot number three, the third shot. Play the third shot intelligently. Normally this is a drop shot. Let's assume your opponent made a great return of the serve and is now with his partner at the net. In other words, the second shot landed deep in your territory and you now face two opponents at the net. Your goal is to get your team to the net. The ideal third shot is a drop shot into the no volley zone, also known as the kitchen. Such a drop shot requires practice. A good place to aim is shown here. This requires the opponent to hit a backhand shot. As you execute such a shot, you and your teammate should quickly scramble toward the no volley zone line. The rather slow drop shot described allows you more time to scramble forward than a fastball. The following video clips show the first three shots played as described here. Notice the serve to the middle of the box, the return down the middle, 
and the drop shot into the no volley zone. Suppose you don't have the skill and touch required to execute the drop shot into the no volley zone as just described. The next best strategy then is to return the ball down the center as softly and as low to the net as possible. Follow the shot and make as much forward progress toward the net as possible. When your opponent is about to hit the ball, stop where you are and get into a ready position. Now let's suppose that one or both of your opponents fails to get to the no volley zone line following their return of serve. In such a case, you no longer need to execute the rather difficult drop shot into the kitchen. Instead, you should attempt to place the ball at foot level into the backhand of whichever opponent is farthest away from the net. Immediately upon hitting this shot toward the opponent's feet, you and your partner need to scramble to the no volley zone line to establish dominance of the net. If you are receiving the third shot and it fails to drop into the no volley zone, but instead comes in deep or hard such that you can hit it as a volley shot, hit the volley shot deep to the left foot of whichever player is farther back. Tip number six, shot number four. Play the fourth shot so as to hinder opponent forward progress. Let's assume your opponent made a great drop shot on the third shot of the game. Your opponents are smartly scrambling toward the net after hitting the soft drop shot. Unless they are fast, they may not get fully to the net by the time you're ready to hit the fourth shot. In other words, they are caught in no man's land. The best strategy is to hit a shot that will land at the left foot of the left player, that is, making a low shot to the backhand. Specifically, aim for this point. Such shots are awkward to hit and they help stymie forward progress. If your opponent returns your shot, he can likely follow it so as to be fully established at the net before the fifth shot is made. Now let's assume your opponents are fast and are at the net before you can hit the fourth shot. In this case, you should play a dink shot as described in the next tip. Tip number seven, net play. Learn to dink and avoid giving the other team a shot. Suppose all four players are now properly positioned at the net. For beginning and intermediate dinkers, the best strategy is to dink conservatively and wait for your opponent to make an error. At this close range, the last thing you want to do is provide your opponent a ball that they can smash. Instead, you want to produce dink shots that land in the no volley zone and which require your opponent to hit up on the ball. In other words, feed your opponent short dink shots that they can't do anything with offensively. The safest shots are usually to the opponent's backhand. The net play described here is like a Mexican standoff and it can go on for a long time, but it ends suddenly when somebody hits a poor shot. Absolutely avoid providing a high ball to an opponent's forehand. Likewise, seize the opportunity to make a smash or body shot if a high shot comes your way. More advanced players place their dink shots so as to move their opponents and create holes in the coverage. For example, moving an opponent to the sideline can create a hole between the opponents. Review now let's go through a quick review of how the first five shots of pickleball are played when they are played smartly and successfully. The serve is made to this point to the center of the box. The key is to avoid a service fault. The return is made to this point forcing a backhand return. Again, the key is to avoid losing this point. After hitting this shot, the service return player quickly advances to the no volley zone line to be alongside his partner. The third shot is a drop volley into the no volley zone. We aim to hit it here, forcing a backhand return. 
both players follow the third shot, making as much forward progress as possible. The fourth shot is a dink if both opponents are at the net. If they are not, the fourth shot goes low to the left player's backhand to stymie their forward progress. By the fifth shot, all players should be at the net and likely a dinking game begins. Here are some video clips that show the shot sequences described above that lead up to the dinking game. Tip number eight. When your opponents are at the net, hit softly when you must hit up on the ball. You may hit hard when you can hit down on the ball. No matter where you are on the court, if your opponents are at the net and if you have to hit up on the ball, it's generally best to hit these shots softly and low to the net. Anytime you're not at the net, you should be trying to get there. The best way to make progress toward the net when your opponents are already there is by following after slow shots. A serious mistake is to hit a high shot to a player at the net. Likewise, you need to capitalize on such shots when they come to you. Tip number nine. If an opponent is back, keep him back. Again, the main strategy objective in pickleball is to get your team to the net while keeping your opponents away from it. Suppose one opponent is at or close to the net and the other is back. Hit the ball at the feet of the opponent who is back. Keep him back by continuing to aim for his feet or to an open space that he cannot reach. If your opponent is here, aim to hit this spot. If your opponent is here, aim here. If your opponent is here, aim here. The following video clips show the smart strategy of a net player holding back an opponent's forward progress. Tip number 10. Avoid low percentage shots. Going down the line. It's sometimes tempting to hit down the sideline or down the alley. Doing this from the net is okay, but to do this from the baseline or from deep in the court is usually a mistake. For every point gained from this, you will likely lose two. A better choice is to focus on getting yourself up to the net. Lobbing from the baseline or from deep in the court. It's tempting to go over the heads of the team at the net. Sneaky lobs while dinking are effective, but to lob from the baseline or from deep in the court is usually a mistake as your opponents have plenty of time to react and move. If you're good at lobbing, you might fare okay against players with poor mobility. However, Against good players, for every point you gain from this, you will likely lose two. If you are not great at lobbing, you will hit half your lobs too short, resulting in a smash, and you'll hit half too long, resulting in out of bounds. A better choice is to focus on getting yourself to the net by means of following a slow shot intended to drop into the no volley zone. Now we have some quiz questions. Have fun with this. Okay, let's start with an easy one. This is your team over here. These are your opponents over here. One of your opponents has been drawn over to the sideline. 
if this guy's in the middle, this guy's over at the side, that's going to leave about a 15 foot space between your opponents. Let's say the ball is here. Where should we hit the ball? With a 15 foot spacing, the best thing to do is put the ball right down the middle. Again, with a 15 foot gap, um, it's going to be very difficult for them to get a ball if it's hit right down the middle. You should always be looking for a large gap between your opponents. Um, it, this is a high percentage shot when you have a large gap between opponents to go right down the middle. Here's a similar situation. This is our team here. These are our opponents over here. The opponents are about 10 feet apart. Say the ball is right here. 10 feet apart, we can probably get the ball between our two opponents uh, without them being able to get the ball. So a good shot would be right down the middle between the two opponents. Okay, here's our team. These are the opponents over here. This is you. You've been drawn over to the side. This is your partner over here. So you have the ball over here somewhere. You've been drawn over to the side. Where should you return the ball? Well, it'd probably be a mistake to return it to this guy who's then going to hit it right down the middle. Probably the best place to return this ball would be over here somewhere so that your partner here can probably protect any shot that comes back. So while you have this big uh, gap here between you, it would probably be a mistake to hit the ball to this guy who's then going to hit it back between you. Okay, here's your team here. Your opponents are up here at the net. Notice that uh, you and your partner are not up at the net. Uh, of course, whenever you're not at the net, you'd like to try to be getting to the net. Suppose you have the ball here, and uh, what should you do uh, with for your next shot? Well, whenever you're not at the net, you need to be trying to get to the net. Probably the best shot to do would be a drop shot that drops in about right here. And this would be a shot that this guy would have to take uh, with a backhand if he's a right-handed player. So an ideal shot would be a drop shot here, which would then allow you to run up here and your partner to get up here to the line. Now, suppose you don't have the, uh, the touch and capability to make this drop shot into the kitchen. Probably the next best shot to do would be one that's low over the net and lands, say, right here. Again, if you keep it low, these folks would still have to hit up on the ball and you could probably still make progress up to the non-volley zone line. Okay, this is your team here. These are your opponents over here. You've got one opponent that's up to the line. You've got one opponent that's back. Let's say the ball is right here. Where should you hit the ball? Well, in general, whenever you have a player that's back, you want to keep him back. You want to hit to the player uh, that's deep. So a good place to aim would be right here. This is a very tough shot to return. If this is a right-handed player, it would be low to his backhand. It'd be very awkward because the shot would land uh, about where his left heel is. So the best place to return that ball would probably be right there. Very difficult shot to return and it keeps this player back. Okay, this is your team here. Here are your opponents over here. One opponent is up on the line. You have another opponent that's very deep in the court uh, back here at the baseline. Let's say the ball is right here. Where should we hit this shot? Again, we've got a player that's deep in the court. Usually when they're back, we want to keep them back. But we shouldn't aim for a spot that's within about four or five feet of the back line. 
We don't want to hit the ball out of bounds. We need to have a little bit of safety margin there. So the best shot to aim, but best place to aim would be about right here. So we'd seek to put the ball here. It would still be very difficult to return. It would be low to the backhand if this is a right-handed player, and that would probably keep this player back. Okay, this is your team here. Your opponents are over here. One opponent is up at the net. One opponent is back. Let's say the ball is right here, this location here. If we can't smash the ball, we'd probably want to aim for a spot here. Remember, we don't want to aim too far back. We don't want to go out of bounds. We should leave... Uh, say about three feet from the side, probably five feet uh, from the back, and a good spot would be, say, right here. Now, if the ball were over here, uh, and this guy's at the back line, this guy's up here at the net, that would then give us probably uh, at least a 13-foot uh, separation there. We could probably hit a shot to go between them, like that. Okay, this is our team here. These are our opponents over here. We have a smash opportunity. We have a ball that's very high. And we have the capability to smash. Let's say the ball is located right here. This player can hit the ball with a forehand shot. Where should we place the ball? Well, it wouldn't be too bad to go down the middle, but if the ball is high, we should be able to hit an angle, say about right here or right here. If we hit the ball hard, we should be able to have the ball be not reachable by going out in a direction like that. Okay, here's our situation. This is our team. Our opponents are over here. We have four players up at the net. Everybody's up at the non-volley zone line. Uh, we're in a dinking game. Where are the safe places to hit a ball in a dinking game? Let's suppose we're at this point just trying to play defensively, uh, trying to hit shots that our opponent uh, can't take advantage of. Well, one good spot would be right here. That would be to the backhand of this player here. Another good spot would be right here, and that would be to the backhand of that player. So if we want to play safe, we can hit the ball here. We could hit the ball here and keep it to the backhand of our opponent. Now let's talk about a strategy for opening up a gap between our two opponents. And let's say we're going to begin this with a return of serve. So our opponents have served the ball to us, and our opponents, say, are located here. Uh, we are going to return the ball uh, to our opponents, and let's say we're going to aim for this spot here. And, and that should draw this player over here to the middle. Uh, hopefully this will be a backhand uh, return for this player. So we're going to start with a shot to the middle. Uh, if he hits it with a backhand, maybe he hits a weak shot here back to us. So say he hits the ball back to us here. The next thing we could try to do is draw the opponent over here. Uh, say our opponent is now located over here. Uh, if he hits a shot back somewhere in this zone here, we could then go between this guy and this guy through that hole. That's one way to open up a gap between your opponents.